slides to go through. So once a table has been put out online or on, on, your, on your database, how do you go through and actually edit that table? Now, this actually may happen many, many times as you're working with a database. You may decide, for instance, that um, uh, you, you don't have a builder file. You don't have, a, you, you don't have any way of actually changing. Uh, you can't like, recompile your, your database. And so what are you supposed to do? Well, so today what we're talking about is some code which you can use in SQLite, uh, which will allow you to change or alter uh, the name of the, of the table. Um, let me just go ahead and get to my slides, and we are here. And I don't know why I have to keep, <laughs> hopefully you can see me better. Maybe I can like, zoom in on this, this little bit here so you can see. No, that doesn't really help. Uh, page fit. Okay, anyway, so they call this, they call this, this work that we're actually talking about today, um, how do you update your tables? And so if you're looking online to see how you can update tables, you'll find a whole bunch of code, and I think that this is uh, essentially what we talk about today is the beginnings of all of that, that code. Um, specifically, we're just talking about some, some very basic stuff, but it's, I mean, there are more complicated ways of doing this. Um, but I'm thinking that everything is more or less, <laughs> it's more or less the same as this. Um, to do this, uh, I'm going to go to the updated version of our, our Campus DB. I've changed this in a little way so that the, um, I don't think the, 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 the keys are going to be bothering you and giving you error messages as they were uh, before. Uh, so let me go ahead and find my terminal, and I'll start work. I'll just start working from there. Um, but I'm in my I'm in my class docs. I'm typing git pull. Hopefully everything's here already. Um, in my git pull directory here, I have lessons, and I can go into my zero five week. Is that I mean the right thing here? Uh, and then I go into my sandbox. And so this is the stuff that we should have here. Now we have two different databases here, so hold, hold fast. We're, we're going to spend some time looking at the, the database. Uh, by the way, Practical 2 is due today. It's due, it's due now almost, but um, please get that in. I, what I want you to do, by the way, um, in, is to basically just copy this directory into your Practicals repository and then work in there. And so that's how you're going to be submitting tickets. I cannot go into your repositories once you've pulled them. I can't go back and change the contents. So I couldn't put my, uh, my files in there for you to, to edit for your practical. And so I couldn't change, for instance, I couldn't add these files here. That's just the nature of the beast. So you're really just copying in this, this directory here into your class docs, and then you push it from there. I think that's an easy way of doing it. But otherwise, I don't know how else you can submit these things without me having to create a new repository each time, which would just basically fill up my, my, my repository bin. Anyway. Um, Next, the next time I'm going to go into this uh, campus DB here, and you'll see that I have a builder, and I think, I think that actually um, you may already have a built file here. If you do, then that's all good. But otherwise, if you don't, then don't forget that you can always type in, this is the bash, by the way, you can always go into the bash, and you can find this last line of code right here, this cat, or con this concatenation code, where I'm going to be reading in this text file, and then piping all that information out to SQLite, which is then going to shove everything into this database, and that's where I'm going to be building my database. So I'll just run this again just to see um, what happens and hopefully you can see what I'm doing there. Now you'll see that there are some constraints that are still um, uh, that are, that are still not satisfied. In fact, I think that if I, let me just try something here. Um, if I remove that file, do I still get those errors? I'm not sure. I'll just put it someplace here. And then, there we go. yeah, okay. So if you build this file from scratch, then you don't get those, those unique constraints, um, those error messages here. Now, let me just say something here. Um, the reason why you're getting those error messages uh, is because the database is already populated with that same data. Now, remember that by the nature of, uh, of, of keys, the primary keys and the foreign keys, well, we're using primary keys uh, to ensure that we have uniqueness. So that means that if I see the same, the same uh, entity coming through my database again, then uh, sound the alarm. I don't want to see any. I don't want to see anything. I don't want to see any, any redundancy. I want to see only the same old stuff uh, over and over again. Or sorry, I want to see uh, sorry brand new stuff every every time. No redundancy. And so when you are rebuilding your database, you may see this this these these uh, errors coming through. And all that means, I mean, this, you can disregard that. But all that means is that it's trying to put in data. In fact, this data that it's putting in is. Uh, it's, the, it's from these insert statements here. Uh, I should change this to campus builder, but whatever. 
it's it's you're as you're building your database, you're you're putting in these these um, these values all over again, and so your your keys are saying, wait a minute, I've already seen that data. I'm going to ignore it, and that's why you get the error message. There's nothing there's nothing wrong there. It doesn't mean that you've done something wrong. It just means that there's a that the data already exists. In order to so in order to actually to add that information, you would have to in order to satisfy your your um, oops, no, I'm getting this. But in order to to satisfy that that uh, those keys, what you'd have to do is you'd have to change. In fact, I have lost my <laughs> I just lost my thing. Um, you would have to change the um, these these uh, IDs right here. Remember, the database was set up so that these are your primary keys, and so they're unique. And so, if you try and put in another, or um, actually maybe it wasn't that not this table, it was something like this table over here, I think. But some of these tables that have these unique uh, unique dis detectors, which are your keys, and so these if they change, then it sounds the alarm. Or if they're sorry, no, they, they change, but if they if they're detected again, then they, it sounds the alarm. Anyway. Um, I'm going to move on now. <laughs> so if I go into my SQLite here, and I go into my campus database.sql3 that I just built, um, you can type in tables. The first thing you want to do when you go into a database is always to type in tables. Always, always do that. Um, that makes sure that you actually have the tables. I do that because um, it can be that, for instance, I'll just type in SQLite3, and I might type in the wrong database name. And so I would know that I'm in the wrong database if I'm not seeing the data or the, the tables that I'm expecting to see. And then another thing you can do to make sure that the tables actually have something in them is to do a simple query. So I'll do select all from teachers. And this is another trick you can do. I can type in limit 10, which says uh, give me the top 10 pieces or the top 10 uh, entries in my table. That's if you have a huge database. And so for instance, if you're looking at the database, uh, that you created for your lab where you're looking at that uniprot data, um, then you, you might want to go in and check to see that the um, uh, that, that your, 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 your imports are working properly. And, but you wouldn't want to spill out the entire contents from each of these tables. And so you just type in this limit 10 or limit 20 or whatever it is. I can type limit, limit 3, for instance, and I can just scoop the top three off the top and, and just, see, uh, just see that there's something in those tables. And so that's so now I'm satisfied. Now I'm 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 satisfied that my builder worked, the data was imported, and um, everything's good to go. So please do do that. I mean, do uh, check to make sure that your your database is actually filling up. Uh, one more thing I should tell you. Um, another trick that I do to make sure that my database actually is filling up is if I type in ls minus l, then for instance I can see this is my database, and I can see that there is stuff filling up in this database here. Okay, cool. Um, another one, another question I'd like to quickly address um, is that how do you get into a Docker container if you're working right here? Well, don't forget that in your um, class docs repository, I have created a a um, a, um, a Docker, uh, I guess, a, a group of Docker scripts that you can use to engage your Docker container. So what I'll do is I'll just go to my repository. Um, and I'll just activate that. That my, my file. In fact, I don't need to have the, I don't think I need to have my, my Docker file here because I've already built the container. But if you are building the container, then you must be in the same directory at least, or at least tell that builder where to find your builder your um, your, your Docker file uh, Docker file there. Um, oops, class docs, and I go to Docker, and then you'll notice that the files that I have in here, I just push tab again so I can see the files without actually having to push enter. Um, I have the build Linux. Build Mac OS. I don't need those files because I've already built the I've already built the container on here. So now I'm just going to run this, and because I'm using a Mac machine, I just type in run underscore Mac OS, and I'm in. So that's one way you can you can get into your Docker container without having to copy those those files into the place where you're working every time. Now you can copy those files into wherever you're working, and that's perfectly fine. Um, whatever you, whatever you, whatever makes it easy for you is absolutely fine with me. But do keep in mind, though, that um, if you're running a Windows machine, that these commands that I'm typing in up here, uh, none of them will work in your Windows unless you're in your, your Docker container, which is really the reason why we're using uh, Docker, so that you can use the Linux commands or Unix commands to actually engage the database. In other words, this cat command here that I was typing in. Um, this uh, this file or this this cat doesn't exist 
in Windows, and so you have to use your graphic container to do this. And then this command here doesn't work in Windows as it is, and so you have to use this in your, your container. So that's, that's why we're using container space, and so I do hope that, that helps to answer some questions. Um, if you do have any questions, uh, please just unmute uh, un, un and, uh, and just let me know what you think. We'll ask you a question, and I'll be glad to, glad to help. Okay, so I'm going to go back to my slides now. And we are talking about updating tables. And so we've had this command we've just gone over. Now, we're talking about actually altering a table's name. How do you change the name of a table? Supposing I've added a table, and uh, then I realize that actually the table wasn't a very good name. Uh, I need to change something, make it a little bit more, uh, a little bit more you know, kind of accessible, perhaps, or maybe more logical, or who knows? I, I, but I, I don't like the name. So we have this, this code here called alter table. And what we do here is we can uh, we actually give the name of the table that we're trying to change. And then we give this command here. This is your other, your, your other part of the command here. Rename to, and then we get the new, the new table name. So let's go ahead and try that. I think that um, you have this. Um, well, this is how you can, you, this is another command. We'll, we'll cover that in a second here. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and just try this over here. Um, so let's go back to the, let's go back here. I'm just going to, one of the nice things about, uh, <laughs> One of the nice things about working with a, with a database um, that we have a build for is that I can go through and I can change any of these. Oops, sorry, I'm not in my database. Whoops, 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 whoops. Okay, now I'm back inside. Tables, we're all there. So now I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to change this name here. I'm gonna change teaches to something else. Let's say I don't like that name. So remember my command is going to be alter table teaches, that's the, that's the name of my table. These, the uppercase is going to be my commands that I'm actually using to make this change, but the, this, this right here is the name of the table. And then I have to tell it what I'm going to do. I'm going to rename to, and I'll just call this um, old teaches. I'll put this in uppercase so that it stands out. Put your semicolon, push enter, and then if you type in tables again, you've just changed the name of your table. Now that's an important command because um, remember, it, it's uh, sometimes you need to repurpose tables in your database, and you don't have the luxury of using a builder file to, to reestablish them. And so sometimes you just need to change the name, and that makes more sense. But if I do a, a search, for instance, from old teachers, you can see that the content is still there. Everything is fine. I haven't lost anything. I've just changed the name. Now I can switch it back. Let's say I don't like this name here. I'm going to say that. Um, Rename to, I'll just edit this, teaches. Go ahead and try this. If, if it goes horribly wrong, then it's not going to damage it. Yes, sir? Uh, these are slides. Also, it's good to use the guided um, how do you, so the question is, can we run this command um, in other ways? Yes, we can. Yes, we can. Um, you can, in fact. Um, one of the things we're going to talk about is actually to create a, uh, a new table, um, which is basically a copy of the table. So you're, you're going to go into this, ta this teaching table, um, and then you're going to take out uh, certain content, I guess, and then you're going to put that, that teaching or that, that content into a new table that you established for that. And so we'll, we'll talk about that. In a that's a very good question, though. But yes, there are multiple ways of doing this, and that's one of the, the beautiful things about SQLite or SQ as a language in general, is that uh, you're not stuck into one specific way of doing things. For better or for worse, there are multiple ways of doing things. And so <laughs> maybe that's a maybe that's thing here. Um, so let's see. So I, I think that uh, you were referring perhaps to slide five. Is that correct? Uh, oh. Slide two. Oh, slide two then. So slide two. Oh, I see. Yes. So, well, that's okay. So, the, so the question is then, how do we explain this piece over here? Well, I'm doing. You could. I mean, there's. If you're running, I wrote it this way because if you're running this in a in some. How do I say this here? Um, next, uh, next, our next section that we go through is actually having uh, computer languages uh, go through and change or work with your databases for you. As databases get bigger and bigger and bigger. Um, it's less and less likely that you expect people to be actually working on these databases. Uh, and so sometimes you may have a, a, a piece of code here which is managing you know, several different databases at the same time. 
And so you have a piece of code like this to establish which database you're going into and then to establish the table that you're, you're going after. We'll get to that in a moment here, but actually, um, I just use this to, just to specify that we're working with, you know, that you, you, you can actually say the database name if you want. But for here, though, um, for today's lesson, we won't do that. We'll just, we'll just assume that we're working one, in one database, and that's, and that's okay. It's, it's a great question, though. But truly, though, when we get into, um, when we actually use Python to run our, our databases, I think you'll see that it's, it's actually quite exciting. You can, you can do a number of, of, uh, of things with, your, with your, 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 your code to make the databases kind of manage themselves in some ways. Um, I'm going to move on now to slide five. And so here what we're doing is I'm going to create a, um, a new table from the information of another table. So what does that mean? Well, if you go back to, let's, oh shoot, I just, uh, <clears throat> okay, so I'm gonna, here we are, slide five. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a new table and I'm going to go through and I'm going to um, create, um, actually pull out certain types of information from a table and then I'm gonna dump it into a new table. <laughs> I know that doesn't sound very articulate there, but we're just dumping information into a new table. So I'm going to just go to my code and let's see if I can, can I copy this? No, I think I probably can't. But I'm gonna, what, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go after this teaching table here. You can see what's inside it. Select all from teaches. And I'm going to now create, this is all from the slides. You can see this is slide number five. Create table, and I'll just call this teaches ID, IDs here. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a new table that's called teaches IDs, and the table is only going to contain the ID information from the, the teaches table. So now what I'm gonna do is I have kind of created a table. Here's the title of the table, and then I need to say what's actually going to be going inside. And so then I use the as select ID, so now I have to tell it what the attribute's gonna be called, as select ID, but it's also gonna be the same attribute which is gonna be pulled from teachers. So there's a lot of things going on here, and so what it will do is it's copying over, hang on, let me just show you, I can get this schema. Ah, goodness gracious. So there's teachers, and then there is teachers IDs. So, it's copying over this information that I've just taken from ID here, from right here. It's taking this information from the teachers table. Where are we? And it's going to put this into my new table, which I'm going to call teachers ID. Now, SQLite is actually kind of smart enough to notice that this is maybe text. It's certainly not, I mean, it, it's, it can be treated as text. It may not necessarily always be text, but it can be treated as such. And so therefore it creates my little table schema for me. Select all from uh, teachers, IDs. Hopefully I'm getting this thing correctly spelled, otherwise it's not going to work. Oops, and there we go. So my table now only has the information from the IDs from this, from my teaching table. So it only has this information here. So I can, I can even, I can change things around a little bit here. By like going back to my original uh, table, I'm gonna edit things around a little bit here. I'm gonna say teachers IDs uh, let's call this teachers two. So IDs, and what else should I put in there? What sec ID? Okay. So I, I select ID, and I'm going to take its sec, like the section ID, and so hopefully that should do it. So if I just copy this table here, tables, select all from. Now you can see that uh, you can't really, it's hard to kind of make out. But what it's doing though is it's just taking the information out exactly as it sees it from my teaching table. And again, it's guessed that because, and we could see that these are actually numbers, but SQLite is saying, you know what, it could be numbers, it could be text, I can treat these as text, I'm going to use text. You can always go back in and edit these things later on, but I think that I'll just leave it the way it is for it is, how, it, how it is right now. Anyway, that's actually kind of cool. So you can actually now take out a piece of information. So let's just talk about for a second, why would this be necessary? Why would I care about doing any of this? What does this have to do with, with working with a database? Well, um, supposing that somebody gives you a database, which is absolutely colossal in size, and you don't want to take out, you don't want to use the whole database every time. 
what you could do is you could actually pull out from that database specific types of information from which you create a, or that you use, that you pull from, from a, a query, and then you could use that to create another database. And you could actually output these files as text files if you want, or you can do something else with them, and we can talk about that. But you can, you can, you can pull this information out and then put this into um, a text file, which then you can use to build a new database. <laughs> so, <clears throat> let me just show you something. I think this is Let me just show you something. Let me, if I back out of this thing, so now I'm back at my root here. One thing I can do, which is actually kind of interesting, is I can type in SQLite 3, followed by the name of my database, which is my campus. And I think I can put in quotes, I can put in quotes the actual query that I want to write. And so that means that inside these quotes, it's going inside, and this, and so this gets back to your question a little bit um, earlier about why do I have to specific, or be specific about my database name? Because when you're working with these kinds of commands here, you do have to specify actually what database you're going after. And so here I'm saying this is the database, this is the, this is the uh, query I'd like to do. Notice I'm still at the bash. I'm, I'm not inside SQLite, I'm at the bash prompt. But what I'm gonna do is I'm going to spill all this information out into my text file. My data.txt, you just type in this greater than sign. And what this will do is it will create a new file right here. And if I type in, if I concatenate this file to see what the contents are, it's the stuff that I just pulled out of my database. And so this is a trick. This is what you can do to actually go after specific subsets of information inside a larger superset, and then to pull that out, create data files, and then create your new database, where you actually are in, in using something called, or you're using your import statements, and then you can import those statements into your database. And so you're able now to trim down a huge database with all this stuff in it that you don't need, into something that's actually much more useful to you. So I think you might find that that's actually quite, quite useful. Right. Um, okay, so let's go back inside the database and let's see what we're doing here. Right, so I'm going to do tables. So I'm back inside, I'm satisfied everything's okay. And I'm going back to my slides and we'll see what else we can do. This is another um, example of your creating a table this is called, and this is the new table that we're creating called um, S table. It's a new table, it doesn't exist now, but it will do after you run this command. Um, and what it's doing is it's going to pull out, you're, gonna, you're basically running a query, which is right here, a query that's going to go into the student table for these specific IDs. You're pulling out the ID, the name, and the total credit for these IDs in the student table. And then whatever results you get from this are going to then be poured into the S table. And so that's another more example, like a more exotic example of how you'd use this to modify or create new tables from existing data that's already inside your database. All right, I'm, uh, I'll leave that to you to run. I think that's uh, it's kind of a fun, uh, it's kind of a fun, uh, uh, well, it's, it's, it's fun to be able to create new tables. I think. Now, we have gone through these before, but I'll go through them again now. Um, let's say that uh, I have a database in my table, um, in my, um, in my, or I have a table in my database, and I would like to, um, I want to remove the data. I want to keep the structure of the table there. I want to have all the, I want the, I want, if I type in dot tables, I still want to see that table exist. But I don't want the data anymore. Let's say the data is outdated and it's gone. So I can type in this command here, and this will make all the data go away. Now, you're probably thinking, don't do it, you're gonna destroy your database, that's okay. Because, because we have this, this database we made from a builder. And so that means that we can, if I do destroy my tables, it's no big deal, I'll just go back to my prompt, rebuild my database, <clears throat> and it's good to go. So selects, oh, let's just see what's in here, let's just do teachers IDs. Teachers IDs, okay. So I want this to go away. And so if I type in delete from table name, the table name now is going to be this, and I'm just lazy here, let's copy this. It's gonna be this. Now you'll notice that if I type in my old command, there is nothing now on the table. So we've actually destroyed data. I know that sounds actually kind of crazy there, but we have destroyed data, it's gone. And so it's for this reason that if you are playing with these commands, uh, please be very careful that you're not actually 
you know, you, that you, first of all, you've backed up your database, but you're not destroying something that you don't uh, want to have back later. Because you might find that uh, you're playing around with this, you're, you're about to submit your lab, and uh, you only have one copy of your database, and uh, you run this command by mistake, everything is gone now, and that means you have to rebuild your database from, from the code that you used. So please be very, very careful. You're playing with fire when you work with these particular commands. Um, going back to my slides here, the other command that I wanted to talk about here was this drop table. We've seen that. That actually makes the table and the data go away. That's different from here, where this just makes the data go away, but the table remains. Here, everything goes away. It's like your, it's, it's, it's actually removing that data structure, if you will, that whole create table code. So the table is actually gone. So let's just see what happens there. I'm going to just try this. <clears throat> scared. I'm scared, but I'm, I'm OK. I'm feeling good. <sighs> OK, so I'm going to go after this schema. I'm going to go after my teaches IDS. I'll get rid of that one, and I'll go after another table, too, just because I'm feeling, I'm feeling the power. So here we go, teaches. I, D, S. Now you'll notice that if I type in tables again, it's not there. But what happens if I type in this command again? There is no table teaches IDs anymore. And this is where you get your error message from when you run your build file for the first time. This no such table exists. That's because when we're, the build file as, it's, as it is right now, it goes in and looks for the tables if they're there and then it destroys them if they are there so that you can rebuild them using your code. If the table already exists, then your rebuild code is not going to work. Your create table code is not going to work because SQLite will think, oh, well, the table's there. I'm going to save some time and skip it. So that's why you get this, this error if the table doesn't exist because this code is actually looking for the code or actually looking for the table and it's so it's disappointed, I guess you can say, when it doesn't find the, um, uh, you know, the, the table present. Okay, so, so far so good. If there's any questions, please let me know. Um, now what we're going to do is we're going to create a, um, we're going to create another, uh, another table here. Let me just go ahead and, and do this here. We're going to put in, oops, we're going we're to add some more information into a table. And so if I go back to here, uh, let's see if I can copy and paste this in here. I'm going to select all from instructor. We have that, and then I'm going to do this. Um, I'm going to go back. If I go back to my slides, you'll see that there's this code here. So what we're doing is we're going to be installing some new information here. So this is a good just to search. Command and I'll just put this in there and then we're going to pull it out. So we're going to put in some information and then I'm going to pull it out. So you've, you've seen this command before. We're going to be inserting into instructor uh, Potter, probably Harry Potter. I was under the influence of Harry Potter when I wrote this. But still, we have this information there now. So now when I go ahead and put in this, you'll see that, that Potter is now inside my database. This is nothing new. We have seen these insert statements before. But what is new is that how do we get rid of the, some of this stuff here? Supposing I want to get rid of, um, let's say that, uh, that Potter has now uh, retired from my department, he's no longer an instructor, and I need to get his name out of here. So how would I do that? Well, we can go back to our code, and if you type in, for instance, this delete command here. So we have uh, delete, oops, D -L -E -C -T. Oh, all right, delete from, and they have to tell me the table here, which is going to be instructor. Now, I'm going to be having, I have to say from something, for instance, about, I have to put in a, a query here, and I have to say, what am I actually deleting from? What am I actually taking away? Because otherwise, if you just type in delete from, uh, if I go back to here, if I just type in delete from table name, then that means remove all the data. But I don't want to remove all the data Instead, what I want to do is to remove a subset of it, a piece of that data. So you have to put in this this uh, kind of a, this conditional statement here. And so this the statement that I'm putting now is saying, don't take away all the data, but rather take away oops, 
take away the information where the name is equal to Potter. And if I type in that, if I just that command here, and I look at my instructor again, you'll see now that, that Potter is not at the bottom here. Potter was there before, but now I've removed Potter from this, from this, this, uh, this table. We can try this again. I'm going to put Farber in the crosshairs and see what I can do. So I'm going to remove Farber. Farber, and then, so I'm going to say, okay, delete from the table, and then I have to introduce my, my, my uh, conditional clause. So I'm going to say, well, where the name is. And let me just show you, what, what is this name business here? Why am I typing name? Well, because if I type in schema, remember we have this attribute here, name. So you need to go after the specific attribute. In fact, I could, I could equally go after um, any attribute here. I could say remove, and let's try something else. And let's not, actually, maybe we shouldn't go after Farber. He's kind of a nice guy. Uh, let's instead go after student. And student will say, um, uh, what should I do here? Um, well, I'll, I'll just go after, <laughs> Farber's a nice guy, but let's just go after student S5. <laughs> so in other words, we're still going after Farber. Um, before I can do that, I need to say what attribute I'm working on. So that's going to be student is equal to S5. Now, notice that S5 is an uppercase. S5 has to be an uppercase down here. The string cases do have to be exact. So now let's just go ahead and see what happened to if Farber is there with the students, oh no, the student is gone, but actually we ended up pulling Farber's record. And that was all because we were looking for a specific piece of information in here, which went after this. Now, one thing else I'm going to do with this, which is I'm going to go nuclear on this, and I'm going to remove, let's go after comp sci here. So <clears throat> where, don't worry, I'll rebuild this. In fact, I expect you to spend some time actually kind of like destroying this database and then rebuilding it back to what it was. Um, because, I mean, that's, that's how you practice with these things. So I'm going to go after all references, I hate to, and I hate to do this, I should probably say a few words before I destroy the department name CompSci, but you know, it's, it's for science. So if I go ahead and push this button here, where I say department name is equal, equal to CompSci, just you know, delete all the information from instructor where that is true, where CompSci is, or the department name is equal to CompSci, you'll see now that I've just limited my field of information here. Comp bio is there, math is there, S or um, comp bio. Yeah, math and comp bio are left, are left behind. I can keep on going further if I wanted to. Comp bio. You can see how I'm just pulling things out. But now I'm thinking that I'm kind of depressed that I, that I did that. I shouldn't have destroyed my database. What can I do? Well, what I would recommend is you could just type in uh, your cat command here. Campus, and then type it into SQLite. Three, and then I'm going to put it back into this. Um, my, ah, let's go on here. And hopefully I can rebuild my table. And if I go back into my table base, and I delete database from my table, I type in tables, everything is there. Select all from instructor. I should have used a shorter name here. Everything is back. And so that is the beauty of these build files. And so I, I expect you to kind of go after these things and destroy your know, data in here and, and, and work out uh, how best you can use these commands for your own personal use. Um, but, but do think about um, how you can, uh, uh, I mean, just play with these, these commands. You have your build file, and uh, you can always rebuild your database. And so go after it. Destroy stuff. Break it, and then bring it back by rebuilding. Um, this is another command which is a little bit more exotic if you go back to the slides. Uh, in this command, what we're doing is we're looking for, um, this is a double constraint, I guess you can call it, where now we're not just looking for the name equals Potter, but imagine, for instance, that I have two people named Potter who are in my instructor table, where one person is in the English department and the other person is in the computer science department. So if I, just, if I destroy all cases of Potter, then it doesn't care whether that person works in the English department or whether that person works in the computer science department. It makes no difference. So now what I have to do is I have to be more specific. And I say, OK, we'll go after the name of Potter, but also go after the reference where he's in the, uh, or he or she is working in the English department. And so you can, you can create uh, these, these conditional statements after your, your delete from table name. 
and then actually go after specific information. Now, you might need that um, if you're going after, in fact, I don't know if, I, if, if this table has Potter in it. I don't think it does. But for instance, if I wanted to go, if I wanted to get rid of um, everyone in, in comp sci, like I just did, if I went after the name comp sci as a department name, then everyone who has anything to do with comp sci is gone. But I might say, for instance, go after comp sci, but also go after people who, whose student is S1. And so I could try that. Let's just, um, let me just, let me just edit this, this, um, let me just edit this thing here. Oops, just edit that. And I'm going to dump this into my database. And I'm not going after the department name. Instead, what I'm going to go after is the, um, actually, I will go for the department name. It seems like it makes sense. Uh, comp sci. So this is a very dangerous command by itself now. If I, if I, remove, if I remove this, it's a very dangerous command because what it's going to do is it's going to go through and it's going to zap this one, this one, this one, this one. All my comp sci is going to be gone, which is actually kind of sad. So I don't want to do that, but I want to go after a specific subset of my data. So I have my and is, um, that, I, that I write in there, and then I add another constraint. And so it's now two things have to be true in order for me to move, remove information. Um, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to look for... Let's say that this student 2, S2, that student has gone away. So I want to remove all people in this record here who have ever worked with S2. And so that's really going after these two people here, Charleston, Charleston and uh, Thompson. So what I will do now is I'll say, for instance, um, student is equal. In fact, what I might want to do is put two equal signs there just because that's the way it goes. Uh, students is going to be equal to, and I'll put this in quotes, uh, S2. So nothing happens. You don't, nothing comes up to the screen here. But you will see now that S1 is here, S3 is here, but there's no S2. That means now that we've, we've gone after those rows or those tuples for which it was, where comp sci was, was present as a uh, department name and S2 was present as a student. And so that's how you get rid of this stuff. All right. Cool. Cool. Um, in fact, this is, um, okay, so this, and then there's another one here, another command, if we're, if we're removing things, well, what if I don't want to remove the data, but I just want to change, I just want to kind of update my data. I don't, want to, I don't want to take it away. I just want to amend the data in some way here. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to work with this particular command right here, the update command. An update will actually, again, work in the same way, where I can write in the constraints and I can go after a specific record here. And I can update a part of that record where my condition is true. So let's see how that works. So I go back to my slides, or somewhere my my my, my um, terminal. Um, let's see. Uh, let's let's say I want to go through and update. Uh, who do I have here? Let's say I want to have Farber. Let's say that I've 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 misspelled Farber's name. His name is actually really. I'm, I feel so bad about misspelling his name. I'm such a bad speller. So Farber has to be, re has to be spelled out as, as really now. So I'll put um, update, uh, which I call this guy. This is name, I guess. Actually, I'll tell you what I should do first before I do that. Oops. Schema instructor. I need to know what the names are. And so I'm going to go after and say, OK, um, update. And then I'm going to go after name. Uh, set, actually, no, sorry, sorry, instructor. Update instructor, so I have to update my table. I have to do set name equals, I'll just call it really, hopefully this will work as is, where name is equal to, and uh, his name is equal to Fiber. Oops. There we go. So I've just changed Farber's name to the correct spelling, which is W I L L Y. So I am deeply apologetic to to Dr. Farber. I never meant to misspell her name, and now I've spelled it correctly. So you can now go through and you can change. You can actually change information. You can you can edit information. Now you're probably thinking this is a lot of code to type in for one little change. I mean, why does it? I I can't type in that much information. And I'm editing my tables. That's absurd. 
Well, let me just put it this way. Uh, you won't have to. You're not going to be typing in this code. These kinds of commands would not be used by you. Uh, instead, I'm getting this ready for next week here, but instead you're going to be using, um, uh, next week we're going to be using a Python program to actually work with our database. And so Python will take care of all of these commands for us. It doesn't, it doesn't care about how much it has to type in. This is going to be information that it just knows that, that it uses to make a change for you. Your, on your end, well, on the human end, um, you might be clicking on buttons, you might be just typing this in a specific form, and then you push submit, and then that submit goes through the code, and then it will actually go into something that will issue this command here in the database. And so, yes, there's a lot of typing here, but don't worry about that because your computer software that you're going to be using to run your database system uh, does this for you. And so, all we care about at this point is that there is some way, uh, some, some way of getting this thing to, to, to happen. Anyway, um, I think I don't want to get too, too long or stuck here. Um, one thing I wanted to, to talk about, though, was the other database, something called the Chinook, which is, uh, I, I, I picked it up from the, um, the SQLite tutorial. Let me just go back and show you this. If I leave the database where I'm working now, oops, uh, type in dot exit, um, go into, can I get out of here? Oh, you know what, I have to leave my, I have to leave this thing here. Go here, and I'm going to go out of this. One thing that's kind of strange about these Docker repositories is, though, that if I can see these repositories here, then I can go down in my in my repository to get to them, but I can't go backwards from wherever I ran this command. So, for instance, here I can get inside my Chinook, inside my container, and I can see this stuff here. But if I were to type in cd dot dot, then I just get into these these other files that are essentially system files for Docker. You can type in CD and get back to wherever you were. Now, I'm going to go into Chinook here and look at this, this new database. And so this is going to be the SQLite um, nightmare to work with this database. It's an enormous database. As you can see, the tables are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. There are, there are 11 tables in number. That seems kind of excessive. But if I go in here, I can type in dot tables, and I can see all my information. I can type in select all from genres, and you, it's, a, it's a music database. They use this as SQLite in their tutorials, so you can go through their tutorials and learn much, much more about this database and using, and using their commands. But it's a, actually a, a pretty sizable database, and they only get bigger and bigger and bigger. But you do have some actually kind of interesting information here. You have primary keys, schema, and you have, uh, I mean, they, they've created some, it's, a, it's, it's like a, uh, what do you call it? It's an industry standard database here. Some of the stuff we just don't have time to, to talk about in this class because we need to move on to other databases. But they do have, for instance, they have the foreign keys and they have some other information here. They have, uh, for instance, um, you have these update commands here. What happens when you start adding more information here? Uh, we talked about that a little bit um, a week ago. Those are some of your constraints. But we have these, um, they, but they, it is actually quite a robust database. Now, one thing that, that, that I'm, that, kind of concerns me here, though, is that there is so much to do here, and I just don't want to type everything in. And so what, what options do I have? Well, there's an option here called DB Browser. You can install this or not, I don't mind, but um, it is uh, open source software. You can get it on, you can get it on, if you go to this uh, website here called, um, if I can show you this, this website here, DB Browser for, for SQLite, um, you can actually pick it up from this website, you can read more about it. There's the, the about here, you can download it. They have Windows binaries, they have uh, Mac OS. And if you're running this from Linux, if you're using something like uh, um, uh, Ubuntu, then you can use a, a sudo apt-get install command just to, to put it in. So I've already installed this, and so you can install this if you want. I would recommend you do, because actually it's, it does make things much, much easier to work with. But let me go back to my, my, my own, uh, let's see if I have it here someplace. There we go, it's right here. So you can look at your you can look at your database in, in with entirely new eyes, which I think is just terrific. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to I've opened up a, a database already, and for instance, one thing that you, you can see though is that your your tables are on the left hand side here, and so I can look inside my course table, and remember before how how important it was to know what the schema is, to know what it was that that um, you know, what was the attribute called that we were actually targeting in our in our, our um, queries? 
Well, now you can you can get a kind of a, a, a visual, a graphic of those things without having to type in schema each time. So what I can do is I can open up my tables. Let's see, I have course ID, title, department name, and credits. In each of these tables, I can kind of see what's what's in there. I made a table called ABC just to mess around. But you have these uh, these tables in here, and then you can also see, you can also see the schema on the other side over here. Now that's all very that's all very cool because, for instance, if I go to execute SQL, oops, I don't know if you can see where I'm typing here. There we are. But I can actually type in a, a, a very sophisticated query here, and to help me write that query, I can actually go after each of these tables and see what those attributes are that I'm going after. So let's just do something basic here. Let's say that I'm doing a select all from uh, instructor. I think you realize this thing <laughs> My projector is blinking, everyone. And so I'm just being a little bit weird here. So I can do a, I'll just do a select all. And I think that after I've done that, I have to click on this. Um, there's this, this a button that looks like a play button. I click on that play button. And then it shows me the, the, the information that's come out here. So let's say that I don't want all this information here. I don't want to see everything here. Instead, what I want to do is I want to amend this so it's not the star, but rather, if I'm going after the instructor, um, let's just say, give me the uh, name. And I can look over on my right-hand side here and see what those, and see what those, um, those attributes are. And then I can just go ahead and run this again. And now I get this. <coughs> but let's get back to the other databases I was looking at and just see how we can use it with that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my file. I go to open database. Um, actually, maybe I have to close this database first. Close database. There we are. It should be closed. I think that should be closed. I'm going to go to my file for DB browser, open the database, and then I'm going to find my, um, my files, which are going to be in the, um, the repository, the class docs repository. Go here. You can't see what I'm doing, I don't think, but I'm, I'm actually searching for the file right now. I'm going into class docs. I'm going into my lessons. Then I go into week five, sandbox, Chinook, and then I go to this Chinook. SQL3. Now, that's more like it. So what I have now is I can see my data, my, I can see my database in full. And this really helped me to write advanced queries because as I'm writing queries over, X, over here, and obviously I'm not using this query any longer, but as I'm writing my queries here, um, I'm able to look into each of the tables, especially if I'm connecting tables together, I'm able to look into each of these tables and to see what those attributes are that I'm going after. And also, I can see, for instance, what those attributes, um, what, their, you know, what their data type is for those attributes. Um, one last thing that I'll say, I um, do spend some time looking over this. One last thing I do like, though, is this Browse Data button you can click on here. And so I don't even have to really type in a query to actually look inside these tables. In fact, I just go to my albums here. I can go to Artists, and I can look inside Artists, and I can see this is a music table here. I don't think I can click on these things, but I can look inside the tables to see what's in there to get an idea about what my data is. And so you can just kind of play with, with, your, with your, your, um, your database in some ways and kind of like just explore the data in some way. But if I'm interested in finding out like how is this database actually put together, what's the schema? So if I want to see how employees was put together, I would go over here and click on this button on the, uh, on the schema side on the right and then I can see, for instance, all this information about uh, how it was put together. Somewhere in here, I can see whether this is a, um, I wish I had <laughs> slide all over the place here. I can see whether it's an integer. I can see whether something is a prime number or a prime key or not. Somewhere, you can see that. You can see whether something is not null or whatever it is. But you can, real, you can really see kind of what I call the anatomy of the database. And it makes programming these things so much easier. So give it a shot. See what you think. Download it if you want. Um, it's all open source software, so it's, um, it's not going to ask you for any licensing or anything like that, but it, it may actually help you um, to put together your, 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 uh, your queries without having to type in that schema every time, which is going to drive you insane. I think I'm over time here. I, am, I do apologize for keeping everybody. I just got too excited about DB Browser. I mean, believe it or not, you're the only ones that I can talk about this excitement with because if I try and tell my friends, uh, I said, hey, guys, I just discovered this new browser software. They're like, uh, yeah, so what? what? So anyway, I, I do apologize for keeping over time here. But anyway, please do spend some time looking at, these, uh, at, at this database using this browser, and I think you'll find that it's actually quite cool. Everybody, stay safe. I'll see you.